Welcome back, everyone, to another exhibition match. This time live! It is a live match, because we have... So again, there was supposed to be a tournament this week, and or the first week of the Lobster Rule Season 2 was supposed to be this week, but unfortunately, Crow, the tournament organizer, got sick, so we are going to be postponing that by a week. However, it was a 3v3 tournament, and this match, after two replays, we're going to be into a match between two teams that actually would have played each other. So, Pro, that's Pro Randy, Randy's number one fan, and Exist, up against Purple Rain, Izzeride, Golda, and Manu 12. And we're starting on Terra, which... Kind of surprising. Actually, I'm going to double-check. I'm a bit curious. What were the... Were there maps that have been decided for the tournament yet? I don't think so, but... I mean, maybe. I don't see any maps. Nope! That's actually really surprising. Yeah, no, map pool had not been decided yet. So, we are, I guess, just on Terra, because why not? It's a map that can produce interesting games. Last game we saw in this was a really weird side switch game, actually. So, yeah, that was a thing. But yeah, are you starting out? Oh, exist? Really? Early Air Factory. I, mean, I don't see that very often. Oh, neat. All right. Randy going for cloak bots. Franny's fan going for spiders, and we're finally seeing Purple Rain actually start to set themselves up as well. Looks like they, I believe they're in voice chat. I think both of them are in voice chat. I mean, it's not hard. What the? All right, double checking everything. You know, the mouse cursors are moving. Oh, no, not all of them. Exist might not be in. Well, we'll deal with that later. Kind of curious, though, because voice chat is not a hard thing to be in. Yeah, the purple rain's in voice chat. Warzone active. All right, let's go. So, yeah, Spider Cloaky Air versus, what is the north side? What do we got? Purple rain. Cloaky for Golda. Roe versus for Manu. And Air as well for Izzeride. So we hadn't really seen a lot of air played in 2v2 in the last... Well, okay, I haven't seen a 2v2 tournament in a while, but... Last time we really saw 2v2, it was largely just two different ground factories. 3v3, however, I suppose with the extra room and on a map like Terra where there's not as much ground to cover, it's a, it's a very rectangular map. Throwing in some air is a strong idea. Get some good scouting, you can provide a little bit extra support for your allies without having to necessarily be in your lane. Yeah, I like it. Good start. And both teams decided that was an idea. So both teams are going for it. Looks like it's going to be slightly in the advantage of Purple Rain in the early dogfights, but still, that's hard to call. I mean, honestly, it comes down to one big dogfight sometime in the middle of the game, probably the 5 to 10 minute mark where one side is able to gain definitive air control. And then eventually, you know, razors and chainsaws and such get built and at that point, air starts being as relevant, but for the early part of the game, yeah, it, it matters. Although, to be fair, Golda has an interesting idea. Just go in. Swifts can't hit that much. Oh, well. Okay. Interesting idea, which Exist had already accounted for. Swifts can't hit easily, cannot easily hit the ground, so you might as well just send the Glaive in. But Exist had a picket, so yeah, that didn't last long. Still, it was an idea. It wasn't a bad idea. It's just, it was an idea that was accounted for. So far, though, it is still the advantage to Purple Rain. Izzeride is managing to win the dogfight. It's just a little bit here and there, but it's enough. Even losing a factory, even using a slip in the factory wasn't that big of a deal. Same time that Randy's fan. Oh, that is beautiful. Randy's fan going around the back. I don't know if this has been spotted. No, it wouldn't have been. Might have been at the big. No, never mind. Line of sight doesn't exist over there. And the radar doesn't go far enough. So, yeah, all these fleas evading radar completely completely evading detection but as soon as anything starts expanding over the back which you'd expect would be safe it's dead like for instance this conjurer so that conjurer is not looking too hot right now same time Goda is going in for a little bit of an attack but it's kind of hard to go in from the front lines like that conjurer however looking to get away from the flea it is not going to succeed there are no support forces near enough by to make that happen Oh, at the same time, though, Randy losing their commander immediately to Manu 12. 
Mano 12 defending their own well enough. Good use of the... Very, very good use of the Scorcher there, actually. Swift's trying to come in to take it out a little bit here and there, but the region's just too much. Same time, Swift's came in and defended the Conjurer from the Fleas. Another attempt from Fleas coming in here for the Masons. Sending two at a time. Still, though, iffy, just because of the fact that Swift's can come in and save the day once again. Dealing with Aryans, it becomes difficult to have this whole setup going. A neat idea, but again, it's hard to maintain. Like, a neat idea, but it, again, has been accounted for. It's really what it comes down to. So the players just have the tools, which is actually, again, kind of why 3v3, 2v2, 3v3 is a bit more stable of an opener for 0k, as we were talking about at the end of the last game. It's just, you're more likely to have the tools available to you to deal with potentially cheesy situations. Well, like, whatever happens, like, you have some contingency, you have some backup, at least one player has some tool available that will allow you to deal with the situation at hand. Which you can't necessarily guarantee in a 1v1. In fact, you can almost guarantee you don't have that in a 1v1. Not really sure what we could do about that, honestly, if you wanted to make the game more stable in 1v1. There are ways of doing it, but honestly, it's, now is not the time to think about it. Now is the time to think about the fact that Randy's fan is being pushed back slowly but surely by Isaride. Uh, well, Isaride on one end, but Randy coming in to save the day on the other as Golda, both Golda and Mano12, looking to take out Randy, Randy's fan's commander. And having, well, little success so far. But this is a dangerous location to try to hold. And Isride has the height advantage. They haven't had a chance to take advantage of it yet because they don't have any artillery, but they could. Or, to be more precise, Gorda could send up some slings and then the slings could. Or, you know, a spider switch could happen and then a crap could go up here and that'll have the same effect. But the point is, yeah, Randy's fan's not really in the best of spots right now. And... Slay, Golda, Izzeride, Manu, all just converging on the center here. Although, nice Thunderbird coming in here. That should open things up well. Golda's commander under fire, but not enough. Really too much back and forth. The air, the air game is looking still to be pretty even. And Golda's commander had enough blaves to defend it that it is fine. As Randy forced to retreat now. Exist, exist also for street a little bit as well. I mean, the Glaives, Glaives can actually do a number on Swifts if given the chance. Gorda, man, Gorda's micring this remarkably well. I mean, that's Gorda's shtick. They are they are an amazing player micro wise, but still, that even by their standards, this is saying some. Like getting, keeping a dozen Glaives like that. In a straight fight, keeping half of them by the end of it is saying a lot. And that's Randy's factory down. The center has broken for the for Pro. I mean, Exist might be able to defend their hill, but it's looking tough. The crash is coming and making the Thunderbirds' life miserable. I mean, this is what I talk about. One side gets the decisive advantage, either by ground-based AA or just by winning the, air, the Swift Wars. And that side is Purple Rain. Randy throws in the towel, Exist agrees, and that is game. Randy's fan, the only one actually looking to take it, but no, they have thrown in the towel as well, and that is Purple Rain taking it inside of seven minutes, so... Okay, I guess that's the flip side, is that you get the game with a lot of ways of dealing with things that come through, but at the same time, it's still going to be seven minutes long. <laughs> it's still a short game, it's just a much more intense short game. Like, you don't, you don't get blown out because you made a tiny mistake because you had you had contingencies to help uh, to help deal with that but it's still fast yeah that is the game though I mean, that's fine that's that that to me is a good thing anyway i don't know if that's going to be it i don't know if the plan is to have multiple games so they said best of one i think Anyway, that's going to be it for right now. I think we're still going to be going with this. Oh, yeah, we are, actually. Oh, well, then never mind. I shouldn't have changed 
to the other thing because apparently we have a game too. So far, Purple Rain has the one game advantage. Okay, so it looks like it'll be either first to th three to five. So I guess, I guess best of three. All right. Well, I'm not going to complain. I mean, the person who requested the remaining replays might, but I don't think so. They were kind of just throwing games at me and saying, these are really cool games. If you want to cast them, have at it. And it's like, okay, cool. But they didn't seem too put out if I didn't get a chance. Anyway, live games are fun. And this is what we should have had today anyway, save for illness. But yeah, I want Ravage now. Not the most 3v3 map. So at the same time, given the overall structure of the map, I expect this to get a little bit more bogged down than Terra did. Like, Terra's wide open and has some easy lanes to work with. Ravage is much more closed. And you have to look at choke points and when you have three team or three players worth of factories around there, it's kind of hard to break into. Though I honestly expect that we're going to have a lot of players building their factories in the low ground, like around here-ish, just because, first off, there's not a lot of room in the high ground, and then this would be a choke point, whereas if you start here, then you can send units out over here or over here or over down the ramps. Like, you have four different exits that units could take from the low ground, but only one from the high ground. Oh, India Ray is back. You missed the first round between Pro and Purple Rain, who decided to just play a game or play a series because there's no tournament today. So they're just going to play a set. I think it's first to three, but I'm not sure. No one's really decided. It's just Randy said they'd be cool with three to five games, which tells me first to three. And so far, we have one game for Purple Rain. And me kind of wishing there was a way of changing the team names in this display. Oh well. Anyway. Exist going for jump. Is red going for air? Golda going for spiders. And like I said, I expect at least... Well, okay. Randy going for tanks, but I expect Randy's fan... Yeah, they are in fact low ground as I thought. Low ground and bots. Interesting choice. Unless they're planning on doing some kind of cheese around the side, I guess it's just because ducks and arches are reasonably strong in a map like this. Like, just on a kind of tight map where you just don't have a lot of maneuverability. I think? I'm guessing. I'm trying to think, like, why would you go for this? Oh, bulkheads. That's the other option, yeah. Sport bulkheads. Just hold all of the lines. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, same time, tanks coming in there. That's, well, Coda. Coda is Coda. Does its thing. And Gold with the Fleas. Gold with the Fleas doing a fair bit of work already. Or trying to, at least. I got rid of one metal extractor. It's not nothing. I mean, that is making cost. Fleas are cheap. Fleas are cheap enough that killing a metal extractor is making cost. Even when you consider the reclaim for the metal extractor in the fleet, it's still making cost. So, is a ride... There... What are they building up for? Because they want air. Early Thunderbird, okay. Didn't go for any early Swifts or anything. Wasn't really sure what to expect, honestly. I had one Swift, but not Swifts, plural. Mana 12 low ground jump bots with moderator priority. I mean, no surprise Ravage would be spiders and jump bots. Like I said, the amp bots are the surprise. I, I'm really curious what the mindset is there coming in from Randy's fan. But again, bulkheads? Yeah, I guess you just sort of slow push in with bulkheads. I mean, that is a thing you can do. And that is a thing they're doing. And that is a what the hell? Exist tournaments go down. Thank you, Anir, for pointing that out. Exist? How do they lose their factory? Oh, wait a sec. No, how did they lose their factory? I'm sorry, I totally missed that. What? I mean... Oh, Pyro came in here and burned it down. I guess Thunderbird must have come in before taking it out and Pyro came in and burned the whole thing to the ground. 
Okay. That's a thing that happens. I am looking at the minimap, but sometimes a lot of stuff's going on, and you miss the factory kills. I try not to, but sometimes you do. At any rate, Randy's fans still at least able to kind of hold on to this, but there's the Thunderbird coming in. Disarming everything but the commander. Still, backup tanks are able to hold the line for the time being. And the bulkheads are only going to be disabled for another five seconds. Or no. Yeah, five seconds. So, that's not going to be too big of a deal. I mean, it is it is annoying. It is a setback. The bigger problem, though, is Gold had taken the entire low ground. I mean, they've taken most of the expansions that Pro would normally have. Also exist rebuilding the jump bot proxy. So that's... That works okay. Still, though, Bulkhead is looking... Like, it might not have been the best choice. I mean, again, Thunderbird can kind of take it out pretty easily. And again, there it is. Randy Fans Commander goes down this time. Is, or goes disabled this time as well. He gets disarmed. And that is a problem. And as the pyro is coming in, Mitre is on top of that. Nothing really to stop it except for a single blitz. Which is certainly trying. And that is the operative word here right now. As all the bulkheads go down, the blitz goes down, Randy's fans commander had to have retreat started retreating five seconds ago if they wanted to survive. Thankfully for them, he's right man told far more concerned about securing territory than they are about assassinating a commander. Or are they, as the Widow comes in here to finish off the commander, allowing the pirate to jump in? Defensive bulkhead and duck trying to save the day, along with the defensive pyro. Randy's fan looks like they will barely survive thanks to the just in time exist pyro or jump bot factory. That was a close run thing, but it's still not over. Randy's fans, Commander, still out of commission for two seconds, and that is two seconds too long as they go down, opening up the center of the map. That is a huge blow. Exist now going to be cut off from the rest of the forces once these, once, well, everything from Izzeride comes in here. And while a flank might come in from Exist to clear things back up, it does not look promising. Thunderbird is... The Thunderbird's still at large, or is it? No. No, it isn't. Thunderbird got shot down. All right, well, that's something at least. Thunderbird is not around anymore to be that big of a problem. But now Raven's coming in instead, looking for mechs kills? Unit snipes? Ah, emissary snipes. That makes sense. Oh, still, Razor comes in too little too late to stop all the harassment that came in and Randy on top of that having another widow. They're not necessarily better defended though. 17 seconds. It's more than enough time for a couple of Hermits to take them out. Gold's, com Gold's commander as well. Coming in here, Randy's commander will be able to fight back, but it's going to be at quite a disadvantage once it's able to, not to mention losing everything is built up. Bulkheads on the side trying to defend, but don't quite have the accuracy, unfortunately, and those Hermits and Gold's Commander take out Randy's Commander. This is looking like another win for Purple Rain, and that is it. Randy throws in the towel, and that is two games to Purple Rain, which, if this is going to be first to three, means that I guess there's one more? I'm not sure, but this is looking... It's looking like it's going to be first of three. Oh, no. First of, first of five? That's a long set. Unless they mean best of five. Hang on. Sorry, best of five equals first of three, so it's a little confusing. But unless they do mean first of five... Like, best of nine. Eh, whatever. They'll just keep playing until they stop playing, I guess. 
Anyway, we're gonna be on Inculta, so... Oh, that was not Inculta, that was not Terra, that was... But still, we're gonna be on Inculta, so let's get on to Inculta. And yes, that last map was not Terra, that last map was... Actually, I guess it's... Not really exhibition matches anymore. Well, it kind of is, but... Eh, whatever. This is game three of I don't know how many. Like, I don't know if they're planning on just playing five games and seeing what happens. Although, if Purple Rain runs another map, I don't really know how that's going to go any other way than... I mean, obviously it's mathematically impossible to go any other way than they win. But yeah. Yeah, sorry, the last map was Ravaged. So, so far... Solid victory coming in here for for Purple Rain. They have 2-0 to their name. Pro, I mean, they've been, they've been able to do some tricky things, but they haven't really been able to deal with all the options that Purple Rain's been throwing at them. At any rate, this time around, Hover, Rover, Air against Air, Rover, and what is Manu up to? Manu's up to Hover as well. So, symmetric factory choices. Slightly different position choices, but symmetric factory choices at least. And Randy. Nope. Not starting out particularly aggressively, letting... Letting their fan handle the aggression and letting Exist handle the scouting. Similar idea. Izzeride is going for air as always. Golda getting early scouting going. And Mana 12 actually being somewhat aggressive. Getting a lot of daggers early on. Randy not even bothering. They, I mean, granted, they have gone in the habit of not building units for the first minute or so beyond a constructor just because of the, of the way that resources work. So, I can see why. I mean, I've... I messed around with it a bit myself. I can see why they do that. Even low priority factory. Well, it's fine. It's it can be a little bit confusing in terms of what exactly is going to happen timing wise. So I can see why Randy does it the way they do it, where they don't rely on priority. At any rate, this attack here. Ooh, these darts. Actually, not a lot here defending the darts. The Swifts are. Going to try to come around, but darts aren't fleas. They actually have some health. And that, again, slow down mechs. Nice little touch. Same time, though, back back over in the southeast, Single Scorcher is not able to do all that much. Dagger's able to take them out the dart. Yeah, the dart didn't do much either. So, early scouting, early damage. Nothing too big. But still, it slows things down a little bit for pro. Like, quite literally, just causes slow damage. Slowing down the factor, slowing down the mexes. It's always a fun little thing to do. But as it stands, both teams have a solid idea of what the other one's doing. Of course, how that plays out, this one Scorcher off in the open, I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but at the same time, that Scorcher's out in the open, not a whole lot is behind it. And right now, Randy's fans coming in along a line that isn't defended. There's daggers coming in. They might be able to regroup in time. But three da or six daggers against three Scorchers. Oof. Backup comes in from Golda, though. Saving the Scorchers. And that does push back Randy's fan. Randy, on the other hand, decided to go around the south with their own daggers. Kind of opening things up a little bit for their fan. Giving them some room to breathe. Man... Nice positioning. Helps get rid of at least one of the daggers, but this is not easy to micro out. Manu 12. Not someone to trifle with when it comes to dagger micro. I mean, really, at this level, no one is, so... Fair enough. It's not a thing to... Still, it's not a thing to really, like, bang your hopes on. And as we can see, Randy's not doing that. Coming in with some backup... Some backup daggers... Should be able to handle that without issue. Randy's fan at the same time, just 
getting that northern side taken. A little bit of defense already set up, but this is on a patrol route from the looks of it, and actually quite open now. Two Scorchers wouldn't be enough to deal with it, though. Randy's fan relying more on the fact that there's pressure over to the south rather than anything else, but the Scorchers still come in from Gota. Certainly trying, but not going to find much. Randy's fan's not coming. Of course, commanders do have radar, so yeah, they can very easily see what is happening. Same time, though, the radar coverage for Purple Rain is considerably more thorough. Still not great, though. Neither side has an owl quite yet. And judging by the way the air war is working out, it looks like Pro is actually going to win the air battles. Should be able to get an owl themselves if they want to pretty soon, but no, instead, going for ravens. Looks like one raven, so... I don't see any major units to target. Probably mech snipes or caretaker snipes. I mean, a single raven can't do much more than that. Still, Randy's fan is... They're still managing to get this thing built up. I mean, they're holding that north line. Randy themselves, holding the west. Kind of surrounding Mano 12 here. I mean, of course, Mano 12's idea is that they can just punch through the center and then hit hard, like, very focused strike on one of the players from the center firebase. But they're also surrounded. And that, like, they're mainly relying right now on Golda for defense along the northern flank. But their southern flank is open. They're the only ones helping deal with it. And this fight here, though, Randy able to take out huge amount of the forces, fortunately losing a lot of themselves to the Lotus, so it's just simplification, even things out. Both players end up with four daggers each. And a lot of reclaim over, like 500 metal reclaim over in Manu's base. Same time, Randy's fan looking to fight go to toe to toe. Well, Commander Wars. Go to, however, with the recon commander. Of course, they are, as a result, more able to get out of here. Still, though, that's, ex that's Exist coming in. Izzerai trying to defend, but gets taken out once again in the dogfight. And there's Gorda's commander getting bombed out. The Ravens don't manage to quite do the job, though. Firing off a little early, but it doesn't matter. Exist has the advantage. Gorda, however, looking to pull back Randy's fans' forces. However, Gorda's force is getting flanked in the process. That is not ideal. Should be able to take out a factory, or not a factory, should be able to take out a mechs or two, though, before they go down themselves. Same time, Randy's fan under heavy... It's dead. Randy's fan's commander is done. This Lotus is going to try. The lightning gun is doing good work, but the best it can do is buy time. But it is not going to survive, and that is that. Randy's fan's commander goes down the north side. It's quite open. The Thunderbird is just a little bit too late. And now, that north side is going to be much harder to hold. Gold's commander, on the other hand, back up to full enough health. He's right on the defense to make sure it's that much harder for... Well, that and the Hacksaw. Making sure it's that much harder for any Ravens to get in. Man of 12 now making use of that firebase try to take out some Quills. Albert's coming in as well, but more importantly, Randy has way too many daggers to contend with. And that means Man of 12's forces are gone. This looks like it'll backfire. Randy's fan looking to take out Man of 12 off the surround. Golda coming in to defend, but Randy's fan just... They have too many forces right here. The, fen the fences alone are the main issue. Same time, Randy going along the south side of the map finds what looks like an opening. A couple of halber halberds, a couple daggers. But it's not going to be a threat. The quill is the main target, and it is done. Too many daggers to survive that. So I've got the snipe. Lost a few daggers in the process, but still... Massively slow down expansion over to the south side of the map, giving giving Randy the advantage there. Exactly what they needed. And from that, Randy needs yeah, Randy coming into flank. No, they need they need to come into flank. Their help is required here. Exist looking to try to take out what they can with the Swifts, but Swifts are not really strong anti-ground forces. Halberds, on the other hand, very much are. 
Now Randy's fan able to get their Scorchers in. Get, there is the surround on Golden Scorchers. No way to micro out of that. Losing the lot with, I think, no casualties in the part of Purple, or part of Pro for that fight. Purple Rain very focused on the defenses here. Mana 12. I mean, they lost their front line. They're still under heavy fire. So we do have more fencers coming in. And the Halberd... Halberd army is doing an amazing job. Thunderbird takes out half of it, but that's not quite enough. So it's coming to try to take out the rest, but again... Isn't causing any major concern. Still, the flip's coming in here for Mana 12. Not a bad choice. Might help bring the air control back into Purple Rain's favor. However, there's 26 Swifts for Exist and only eight, 15 now for Is Right. 15 and dropping fast. I'm oh, sorry, not 15, two. There's two Swifts. One of them is in construction. Yeah, Izurai just has not been able to maintain a ground, an air force, and now revenge from it. Randy's fan taking out Gorda's base over to the eastern side of the map. Gorda's commander is surrounded. They might be able to jump over this hill, but this hill is vehicle pathable. However, Gorda coming in with their own scorches to defend, and there's that jump. But unfortunately, the jump is a little late. Gorda's commander not quite dead yet. Swift's coming and finishing the job. There it is. Gota's commander is down. Randy's fan gets their revenge. And Randy gets an attack over to the south side. Following that up. Albert's looking for a snipe. Not quite sure where they're targeting, though. I mean, I'm really not sure where they're targeting. They're trying to go for a factory snipe or a fusion snipe or what? Still, the, and I'm sure they know about the fusion plant. They, oh, they don't. Really? Oh, okay. Thought the Swiss would have spotted that in the last pass, but I guess they hadn't. Speaking of, 32 Swifts for Exist. I mean, flails are a thing now, so there are answers, of which there's, what, three, four? Three in the front lines. But otherwise, that is looking iffy. Now, Randy's fan should be able to take out this entire northeast side as well. Just take all the resources, take all the reclaim. Losing a few masons here and there, but Gorda is slowly but surely falling behind. Purple Rain is a whole falling behind. The reclaim is managing to keep them in the game, but even then, they're still you know, 20 metal per second behind. Gradually losing forces. Haven't really found any strong hits, whereas there's been two solid attacks that have that have chunked out a ton of territory from Purple Rain. I mean, there's an attack on Mana 12 in the center, and there's an attack on Gold over to the northeast. And Purple Rain has not found a similar result on their end. They've just been gradually ceding territory. Now, I will admit, this is half and half. So it's possible with the right reclaim and a good fight on the part of Purple Rain, they can turn this around. It's nowhere near done yet. But... The fact that air control is so solidly in Pro's favor, to the point that the Swifts are bullying Masons. Yeah, that's still pretty scary. In the Northeast, again, Gorda just has no easy way of taking that back. Honestly, Impound of Surprise crashes haven't been built, but at the same time, there's so much frontline pressure that I don't know if they really can. I don't know if Gorda can afford to do that. They're uh, I don't think they can afford to throw units away like that either. Is there, is there rally points that wrong? Nope, rally points that fine. Not sure why that happened. So with that, that's close to two thirds of the map, or well, sixty percent of the map roughly going over to pro. And on top of that, Thunderbird harassment. Ravens coming in whenever they want to and can bomb whatever they like. Waiting for a good target, though. I mean, factory would be a solid choice. I think all the commanders are dead. No, nope, one commander is alive. Commander 12's commander is alive. I think that's it. Goldus commander went down. And Israel's commander... No, they're still alive. So, Purple Rain has two commanders, but at this stage in the game, it's not really that relevant. It's only relevant when they're doing forward expansions, and neither of these commanders are. Well, Manitoba's commander is supporting a forward expansion, so actually if it goes down, that would be a big deal. 
But Izzerod's commander is a home base commander. Same for Exist. That being said, Randy still has their commander up as well. It's just not quite as forward. It's like, once again, enough static defense, enough units, enough other builders. It's not so important if you lose the commander. But we'll see, because Mano 12 is about to lose theirs, and that will, like I said, likely open up the center. Follow-up, however, is not really there. Randy much more focused on defending their own side. Mana 12, yeah, they've got the one Quill. But without that Quill, there's no Stardust at the Stardust. There's really no defenses, and that is Mana 12 losing the center. And oh, that might be the game. Might actually be a win for Pro. I and mean, this is looking like, I don't know, Pro just has the... Not an army advantage, certainly a positional advantage, and they almost certainly have an army advantage. Randy having to face down a bunch of halberds, but they got the scalpels. They are well prepared for this. Swift's coming in again from Exist, but Izzerite forced to retreat. Izzerite having to manage to build up 23 of their own. Exist not really focusing on that too much, only 28 Swifts. But they also have loads and loads of ravens. Just threatening everything. And Gorda's commander... Or sorry, Gorda's force of Scorchers once again. Very likely to get surrounded. So for now... There is... Like, this one Scorcher ball is the only thing that Gorda really has. If that goes down, that... I think will be it. Randy will probably push in. Because maces aren't really a threat to a scalpel... Scalper Halberd army. Scorch is kind of a threat to each other, but again, Golda not really managing the numbers. If 20 for Golda and 30 for Randy's fan. Now, granted, Scorches are a little, little position dependent, so it's it, it's hard to really call off numbers, but still, that's worth noting. Just scale of army here. There is a 50% advantage for Randy's fan, and also I just think a positional advantage. So the fact that they're the nice, nice little spread out line. Means they're just able to hit everything brutally as Golda's forces are going down. Unfortunately, the Randy's the thing I was about to compliment Randy's line kind of working against them as they split their own forces, but it's fine because it does keep backups alive, if nothing else. Taking advantage of that 50% extra army and able to wipe out Golda's entire Scorcher force. And with that wiping out basically the rest of the support forces, the crashes won't last much longer. Fencer's coming in as backup as well. And the crash is taking out Swift after Swift. There's only 19 left, but that's not really a big deal. Izzerite's commander is down. There is no more defenses for these crashers. Scorch come in whenever. Randy's fan nicely played. Getting rid of Golda's entire Scorcher force. I mean, not the most efficient. Again, their formation was actually not the best. If they had concaved at first, it would have been perfect. But they hadn't quite managed to do that. But still, it worked out. Just due to the numbers advantage they had. Now, Harbor's coming in. Won't be able to do a whole lot of damage. A couple of caretakers. Not nothing. But this fusion plant won't die far too much. Is stopping the Halberds from dealing any meaningful damage. Almost got another caretaker. I think that actually might be enough that Purple Rain is accessing now. I mean, they are accessing now. Yeah, two caretakers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, actually, that, that does make the difference. So Purple Rain... Should be able to rebuild the caretakers quickly enough. It's not the biggest concern. But it is an annoyance. And I mean, at this stage in the game, Purple Rain needs every advantage they can get. And they just got a bit of a disadvantage on their end. I gotta say, though, Gota has been actually handling this well. Despite losing their entire Scorcher Force, having to rebuild that. Switching off into Rippers on top of that. Smart call. I mean, the numbers advantage is definitely on Randy's fan's side. But the Rippers will... Like, three Rippers will tear apart basically any number of Scorchers. That being said, Randy's fan had the same thought. Because that is how the escalation goes for Rovers. Still kind of an even spread here, but the air control is starting to be lost. Flails are up. The crashes weren't destroyed. Gradual increase in ground-based anti-air has reduced the number of Swifts. 21 to... 24! Israel, for the first time in this game, having an advantage on the number of Swifts. 
thanks to all the ground based AA, the flails and these crashers are slowly but surely tearing apart Exist Air Force. Now, it's not really a counter. Granted, Exist does have the Dante, but the Dante is so heavily damaged that it's not able to do all that much. Dealt some damage, though. Got some. Got some stuff in there, but it's still. Manu 12 maintains their position. So ultimately, it didn't manage to do much. Same may not be able to be said for Golden losing their Rippers far too quickly. The Scorch is going down as well. Much better position coming in here from Randy's fan. Able to keep most of their Scorchers alive this time around and not really care. Just going in, taking out Mason after Mason. All the defenses are gone. The metallic strategies are going to fall soon afterwards. Crash is forced to retreat, and this entire northeast side has been lost by Golda once again. And I think Randy's number one fan. Are they in a position to retake? No, they're not. They have no bases nearby. Well, it's taken it from Golda, at least. Belongs to no one now. But more importantly, the Crashers. The Crashers able to escape. That is, that is a bit of a shame. Randy's number one fan. If they get rid of the Crashers, that, once again, gives Exist far more room to maneuver. And as it stands, Exist is managing to win out the Swift Wars, but the Crashers are just making that victory all for nothing. Which is why, again, take out the Crashers, and that'll completely seal the deal. And... oh. Yeah, Jessica Cash pointing on chat. I thought the game was over 10 minutes ago. Yes, yeah, so did I. Honestly, I am... I don't quite know, but Manu12 is... Managed to hold on really well. Gold has managed to hold this north reasonably well, but it's starting to fall. That this is the main, like this is the main area where I think Pro is has the massive advantage. Southeast has this army they can work with, but it's looking iffy. And look at the economy stats; it still looks kind of iffy. Rain's number one fan taking a lot of losses, but taking out a lot of fencers and the crashers. The crashers go down. That is it with the crashes down. There's nothing that's going to stop Pro from taking this match. I think the, the flail's, flail's not going to be enough. No, Penetrator's coming in again. Mana 12 holding the line. They took out Randy's commander. That actually would do a lot. They had the force to do it, too. I mean, seriously, five Penetrators, that's more than enough. I'm oh, sorry, five Lances. They're not all Penetrators anymore. Five Lances is more than enough. And that's assuming the Lances don't die, though. Scalp's coming in here. Halberd's looking to take them out. I think the fact that there's a Cornea here is known, but I don't... don't see Mana 12 trying to find it. And if they did, they'd find the Commander and be able to take them out immediately. I thought the Commander would be a lot. Same time over the north, though, we have Dante's coming up. Dante for Golda. Dante for Exist. Having repaired their Dante. And still four crashes remain. 14 swifts for... Well, 14 swifts to zero. So the so the current advantage remains exists on the air. Same time the Southeast with a lot of reclaim turning their economy back around once again. And on top of that, Southeast does have a 4k advantage on attrition and they're pushing in really hard into Randy's base. Just hitting the periphery, but that is a lot. That is a wide periphery. And Brandy just surviving thanks to the Corneas. Or Randy's commander surviving thanks to the Corneas, but... Even then, they're losing a lot of support. They're losing a lot of overdrive. They're losing a lot of territory control in general. Manu 12 getting back that center point they took from the start. It's working out reasonably well for them so far. Same time, Gorda with that Dante able to push back Randy's fan. And that reclaim is not lasting. Pro kind of depending on that southeast, or sorry, purple rain. Able to get the reclaim right back. Able to take the northeast once again. No decisive push was successful for Pro. Purple Rain setting up for their own decisive push. The Lance is coming in here from Exist. I'm oh, sorry, from Randy. Switching switching over to a full Lance army because, well, clearly that stage of the game. However, Manu 12 has a much, much more thorough support force. Halberts will be able to come in, take out the Lances. Same time over to the north, defensers from Israel, along with their Thunderbird, taking out all the support forces for Exist Dante. Granted, that's not going to save the Crashers right now. The Crashers, again, are the key asset. 
Though that being said, Southeast has taken all this reclaim, and that... I still think is worth far more... Oops, how much reclaim is there here? Oh, 6,000 or so? Yep, yeah, I don't know. The reclaim would just seem to be crashing sometimes. At any rate, the Dante has finally been disarmed. Or rather, Exist Dante has finally been disarmed. Same can't be said for Golda's Dante. But Exist Dante, unfortunately, disarmed, moving into combat while disarmed, and does not survive. Does pay for that particular mistake. Same time, though, looks like... Oh, Randy's commander has been spotted. The lances... Oh, they don't quite go for it. Imperfect timing. There's the build, though. That was ill-advised. Ill-timed construction there. Randy's commander should survive long enough to actually not die, but still... Not ideal. But the lances are becoming a problem. Randy's lances kind of collapsing down the army. But if Randy's commander goes down it, which it does, that's the south side gone. There is nothing else building here or really supporting it. So that is that. South side gone. Man 12 able to completely secure that. Randy losing a massive chunk of territory. There's the win I was talking about. Purple Rain taking territory back. Hard-fought fight there, but Manu 12 was, has finally been able to push back. Now, what can Randy do to actually defend against this? The support forces are starting to come in, but they're losing lance after lance, and the halberds can just completely mess with them. Two lances down, just on lance fights. And again, the halberds, just the fact that they force the lances to... Well, not necessarily force, but the lances are on ready to are on fire at will. So, does bait out the lances, which means... Well, the remaining lances can just... Fire right back and take them out. Same time, Goldie able to wipe out everything that had been built up over to the north. Randy losing everything built up over to the south. And there is nothing really stopping this. The lance is basically the win condition right now. Half a dozen lances. I mean, 6,000 metal worth, but they're dealing... You know... Also, but yeah, they're dealing 18,000 damage every volley. Across a line. On top of, you know, the support forces that Manu has, the support forces that Izzeride's pulling in. It's kind of unfortunate. Exist, they switched into tank eventually, but it took them a while to do so, and I think that's really what kind of did them in. To be totally honest, I think the fact that they... They were... So gung-ho on air, it worked for a while. But eventually the crashes came in and they weren't really taken out. The flails came in and they weren't really taken out. And Israel had already switched over into like rover plate rovers, just adding to their adding to their team. And I mean, exist they added tanks, which didn't do manage to do a whole lot. So well played by Israel, that ground switch there off the off the plate. I mean, that's that is the thing the plates really enable. <laughs> People talking about attrition value of Man Manu's lances. Well, one of them made 846% cost. See, so yeah, it made nine times cost. This one. No, sorry, this one right here. Actually, these two. That, like, the amount of gold, st gold stars, silver stars, that's, I believe, five times and ten times, respectively. Like, this is five times, this is ten times. I think that is... That's saying a lot. That's... That is a thing. So, well done there. So, I think... I don't know if that's that. I think that might be it. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks like... I mean, that was, you know, a best of five. Okay, sorry. Are we doing... Get some... Okay, apparently it's first to five. No, BO5 is... <laughs> Darn it. BO5 is first to three. Okay, well, Randy's 
subbing out, or sorry, Franny's fan needs to sub out. I think I'll call it, though. This was, you know, if it's best of five, that was best of five. And... Well, that's that. So, yeah. Well done to Team Purple Rain. So, cool. Anyway, that is going to be that. So, thank you all for watching. I mean, they can play if they want, but it's best of five, and Purple Rain took it 3-0, three, three oh, and also this video is getting long. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's, that's that. So, they can play if they like. But yeah. And also, it's, the team lineup's changing, and I think it's not going to be pro anyway. So yeah, that's that. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone. See you next week for the tournament.